Hi, this is Anil from Pristine. In this session, we'll talk about alternative investments. The weight of this topic is only 3%. So you will get 8 questions out of 240 from this topic. The concepts discussed in this topic will help you in understanding the alternative investments of CFA level 2. So pay attention to those particular topics. So one of those topics I have chosen for the discussion here. So that is the real estate valuation. So there are two major approaches or methods used for real estate valuations. The first one being the sales comparison approach and the second one is income approach. This income approach uses the net operating income and this particular method is used in the real estate valuation in the real life. So all the income yielding assets in the real estate get valued using the net operating income. All right. So I'll start with the sales comparison approach. This approach uses uh, very, very often it uses a hedonic model. So this model is nothing but a regression model that is run on different parameters and it defines the the coefficients of each and every parameter. So let's take an example. I think that will help us in understanding it in a better fashion. So suppose uh, using a statistical method regression, uh, we have found that the number of rooms carry a weight of 50,000 USDs. So in, in a particular locality, if you keep on adding a room, the cost of the complete property starts increasing by 50,000 units. Also in the same locality, the distance to the nearest public transportation, if that increases by one mile, the pro value of the property decreases by 5,000 units. And similarly, there is a, a, a dummy variable here, which is the gym in the neighborhood. If there is a gym, which is denoted by one, the cost or the value of the property will increase by 10,000 USDs. Otherwise, it would be zero. So using this simple regression model, we need to find the appraised value of the property. So we can write this equation as the value equal to A into number of rooms plus B into distance from the nearest public transportation plus C into gym. So we know these coefficients A, B and C. So A is 50K, B is minus 5K and C is 10K. So putting these values, I will get 50,000 into number of rooms. We have five rooms here plus B is minus five into and the distance is half a mile so one upon two plus the gym is not there so zero into ten thousand so it becomes two five zero minus two five zero zero so the answer becomes two four seven five zero zero so b is the answer so uh, this hedonic model which is the part of the important part of the sales comparison approach this is nothing but a regression model and here we need not to find the regression coefficients the regression coefficients would be given in the exam we simply need to identify what are the coefficients and simply put in the values of the appraised property. 
So here the property values were 5 for the bedroom, half for the distance and 0 for the gym. So using this we got the value of the value of the property as 20 24 sorry is 247,500 dollars so the idea is it's just a regression equation and we should be able to understand what's the meaning of these slope coefficients so where whenever you get these kind of slope coefficients you can write it into a complete equation in this fashion now the second the second model is using the net operating income or the income approach so here we define the property and we calculate the rental income from that property so net, net operating income is the is the rental income plus sorry minus minus the uh, vacancy and collection losses which is given as 10% of the rental income so it becomes 10% of 500,000 minus the insurance and taxes paid, paid on the property so those are given as 50,000 and the maintenance cost is again 20,000 so rental income is 500,000 right and this depreciation and the interest on financing does not come under the net operating income so this is important note here depreciation and interest on financing does not come under NOI so NOI has four components the first one being the most important which is the revenue or the rental income the second one is the vacancy and collection losses insurance and taxes is again a significant cost and the maintenance and repair cost is also a significant cost in the calculation of net operating income so once we have got this net operating income which would be 500000 minus 5000 sorry 50000 minus 50000 minus 20000 so it becomes 380 thousand USDs so this is the net operating income now from this net operating income we need to calculate the value of the property so depending on the locality we we get a ratio of ratio of net operating income to the value so this ratio of the net operating income to the value of the property is called as the market capitalization. So this market capitalization rate, we call this as market cap rate. This market cap rate is fixed for a particular locality. So we can fairly assume that in a particular locality, the market cap rate does not change with the property so here another information that is given to us is that if there was a similar sale with NOI of this and the sale price was 1 million so the cap rate here would be 100,000 upon 1000 thousand, so it becomes 10% so the cap rate we can say from this particular locality is 10 percent so if the cap rate is known to us here we have already found the net operating income for some other property so the value of of the current property is equal to 380,000 upon 10 percent so which becomes 3.8 million dollars so a would be the answer so a would be the answer here 
Now, so what are the takeaways from here? The takeaway from here is that net operating income does not include the depreciation. It does not include the interest or the financing cost. Also, the taxes that are used here, those are only the property taxes, okay? And those would be the property taxes only. Also, the market cap is the ratio of the net operating income to the value of complete property. All right, so these are the two important concepts and from these two concepts only, you can expect two to three questions out of eight. So if you have understood this tutorial well, I, I think you would be able to solve two to three questions out of eight questions which are asked from the alternative investments. So if you have any doubt, any query regarding these two topics, feel free to write me at anil at, at eneve.com. I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial and I hope to see you around in the next class. Thanks.